Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. Are you leaving gains on the table by not consuming protein before sleep? It's said that this is one last attempt to tip the scales in favor of muscle protein synthesis and help sustain protein synthesis all night long, especially when a slow digesting protein like casein is consumed. But does this translate into more muscle growth? Should you consume protein before bed? Let's dive in. In 2021, a systematic review on the effects of pre-sleep protein was published. There were two main conclusions. Consuming 20 to 40 grams of casein approximately 30 minutes before sleep successfully stimulates protein synthesis in the overnight period in young and elderly men. There is direct evidence, at least in younger men, that pre-sleep protein enhances muscle and strength gains seen from 10 to 12 weeks of training. At face value, this seems like clear proof. But there are some important considerations. The second point is more vital, but firstly, I am skeptical that there's anything special about casein. Virtually all of the studies used casein, but they did not compare it to another protein type. I suspect they just used casein due to convention and the belief that tends to be used in protein marketing, that slow proteins such as casein will elicit gradual and slower elevations in blood amino acid concentrations so are better suited to consuming before sleep, whereas fast proteins such as whey elicit a fast and high peak in blood amino acid levels so are suited to any other time. However, this simply isn't compelling reasoning to me, since although you can have two things that differ in the time course of blood amino acid level elevations, the area under the curve may be similar. Additionally, blood amino acid levels do not appear to always be related to muscle protein synthesis. Indeed, two years after the 2021 review, a paper from the Netherlands had subjects perform a cycling 60-minute bout in the evening and then compared muscle protein synthesis after consuming either 45 grams of casein or whey 30 minutes before bed. Whey produced a higher peak in blood total amino acid levels, while casein produced longer lasting elevations, but the area under the curve was similar. Crucially, there were no significant differences in myofibula or mitochondrial protein synthesis. It was actually numerically greater for whey, but I don't interpret this as whey being absolutely better though. When considering the overall literature, it seems slow and fast proteins are ultimately probably similar for increasing lean mass, and this also includes plant-based proteins. The second point about the review is that total protein intake was not controlled. The subjects that consumed pre-sleep protein had a greater total protein intake than the subjects who did not consume pre-sleep protein. For example, in the review, they detailed one study conducted on untrained men training three times per week for 12 weeks. One group consumed a non-caloric placebo immediately before bed, while another consumed 27.5 grams of protein immediately before bed, but this also meant they consumed more total protein overall, 1.9 grams per kilogram of body weight for the pre-sleep protein group versus 1.3 grams per kilogram of body weight for the placebo group. So, while growth and strength gains tended to be better when consuming the pre-sleep protein, we don't know how much of the benefits are driven by consuming protein before sleep or just consuming more total protein. This is a point overlooked by many videos on pre-sleep protein I've seen. We need to run a study where total protein intake is equated. We could do this by providing one group with a protein supplement before sleep and another group consuming the protein supplement at a different time, such as in the morning. Luckily, we have three studies that have done this. This paper recruited 26 trained individuals. Subjects consumed 54 grams of casein, with one group consuming this before bed and another group in the morning. Daily protein intake was the same and subjects undertook 8 weeks of training. Fat-free mass increased by 1.2 kg for the pre-sleep group and 0.4 kg for the morning group. However, this was not statistically significant and the sample size was small. We can get large numerical differences between groups due to chance with small sample sizes. And maybe as a sign of that, numerically bench press strength gains favored the group consuming protein in the morning. But again, nothing was statistically significant. Another limitation is that each subject continued training with their own program, so training was not controlled between groups. So this study isn't all that informative by itself. What do the two other papers say? The second paper controlled subjects training. They had recreationally active subjects train with this program for 10 weeks. 
One group consumed 35 grams of casein immediately before sleep, while a second group consumed 35 grams of casein much earlier in the day. Total daily protein intake was similar between both groups. There were no significant differences in measures of muscle or strength gains between both groups. The muscle measures actually favored the group taking protein earlier in the day, but again, unfortunately there were merely 13 subjects overall. So perhaps this difference is simply due to the variability that can come with small sample sizes. As for the third study, its sample size is a little better, coming in with 42 previously untrained subjects, but they also had a control group, meaning the sample size per group was still fairly small. Subjects trained the leg press for six weeks with these variables. One group consumed whey protein prior to sleep and a placebo in the morning, while another consumed whey protein in the morning and a placebo before bed. Whey protein was also combined with vitamin D. A control group just consumed placebos at both time points. Increases in size and strength tended to be lower for the control group, though not all differences were statistically significant. There were also no statistically significant differences between the morning and pre-sleep groups. The measures of growth this time are back favoring the pre-sleep group, but the lack of significance clouds our ability to suspect if this is a genuine effect or just noise. Maybe as a sign of that, strength gains on the leg press and leg extension opposingly favored the morning group. Thus, unlike the data that does not control total daily protein intake, the research that controls total protein daily intake finds no discernible differences in muscle and strength gains between pre-sleep protein and protein consumed at another time. But you also have the right to be disappointed in this data, since it is far from strong evidence largely due to small sample sizes. Nevertheless, I still felt it was worth presenting this data, as you can see confident claims about pre-sleep protein on the internet. And in a more general sense, you can see people present research in a better light than it actually is, ignoring crucial limitations. I hope I've made it clear enough that based on what we currently have, we simply do not have strong evidence that pre-sleep protein absolutely helps you build more muscle. For this reason, I simply wouldn't worry about consuming pre-sleep protein. To be clear, you can do it if you wish. And some may say it's a better safe than sorry approach for those wishing to leave no stone, no matter how small, unturned. Some are understandably concerned about pre-sleep protein interfering with sleep, but the current evidence I came across failed to show any sleep disruptions from a protein shake in close proximity to sleep. Yet, there may be differences between individuals and if you're consuming solid protein in combination with a reasonable degree of carbs and fats, we would expect a greater likelihood of sleep disruption. Anyhow, when we look at the overall literature on protein, it is clear that total protein daily intake is by far the most important thing. If there is a benefit to pre-sleep protein that is identified in the future, I am almost certain it will be relatively small or trivial. I'll have an updated video about total daily protein intake in the coming months, so stay tuned. If you're looking for an exceedingly effective customized muscle building program, our exceptionally rated partner, the Alpha Progression app, can help you. No other app gets close to creating personalized programs as comprehensive and well-rounded. Input key details, such as what equipment you have, if you want to emphasize some muscles more than others, and how often and how long you're able to train for. This generally takes less than a minute. The training philosophy is based on the latest scientific literature, during workouts, there's a built-in warm-up set calculator and rest interval timer. Track each set with the app, and the app also provides progressive overload recommendations to assist you. And there's a nice workout summary at the end. Of course, the app automatically logs and displays your progression across time. If you're unsure about exercise technique, there are straightforward video and text instructions on over 600 exercises. The reviews from tens of thousands is a testament to its exceptional quality, but we would love to know what you think. The link in the comments and description gives you a free two-week trial plus 20% off a subscription if you do continue. Thank you for making it to the end. Feel free to check out another one of the videos at the House of Hypertrophy.